So you, um, you got a contract with the Defense Department to do a lunar lander. Which from is being, NASA. From NASA, um, which is being disputed by Jeff Bezos. Yes. How do you feel about that? Well, I think I've uh, expressed my thoughts on that front. Um, you know, uh, if, if it, I, I think he should put more uh, of his energy into uh, getting to orbit uh, than lawsuits. Um, okay. you, you, can't, you cannot sue your way to the moon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know how good your lawyers are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so why isn't he doing that? Uh, I don't know. I also like to make fun of his rocket. We all make fun of each other's rockets. I, I mean, I think it does have, uh, I mean, it could be a different shape, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> could you explain from a technological point of view why it's that shape? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, if you are only going to doing suborbital, then your rocket can be sort of... Sure. Shorter, yes. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so, have you called him and said, cut the shit, get bigger, or what? I mean, I have, I have encouraged um, him to emphasize uh, getting to orbit, yes. Do you talk to him? Um, not verbally. Not verbally. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, mind meld? Or no, mind? just, uh, you know. Tweet at him. Yeah, yeah, tweet at him. Yeah, exactly. Subtweet, if you want. Subtweet. <laughs> so what is up to what you do stuff to it? So what so what are you gonna do with the lunar lander and how do you get the moon base there? Yeah, so um Starship is designed essentially as a general purpose uh transport system to anywhere in the solar system. Uh because it is a propulsive lander. Um and with a propulsive lander uh you can land anywhere that's got a solid surface. Um so, uh, and, and it's also designed for uh, orbital refilling. So you can uh, get the Starship to orbit and then um, send tanker flights to refill it so that it has uh, tremendous uh, delta velocity. Basically, it, it can go very far from Earth orbit because you can uh, refill propellant. The moon base is important because? Um, well, I think the, the moon base, I mean, certainly there's like a lot we could learn scientifically if we had a proper laboratory in the moon um, about the nature of the universe and, you know, where we all came from and the early history of Earth and that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, we have a, a science station in Antarctica and we're still learning a lot from, uh, you know, our, our activities in Antarctica and I think we could learn uh, even more on the moon. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of value, I think, to having a, I think it'd be just freaking cool. I mean, come on. It's like, we got to, you know, humanity, let's, we got to represent here for humanity. You know, just have a base on the moon. I think everyone would be like, yeah, hell yeah, we got a base on the moon. That's cool. Yeah. You know? Um, for tourism? Uh, what do you think? No, I'm so the science, science, uh, science uh, I think, like, so, a, lot of, a lot could be learned if you've got a sort of a science station on the moon, like we've got a science station in, in our Antarctica and many other places. Um, and uh, I think uh, there's, I think there is value um, that shouldn't be denigrated for people who want to experience uh, going to orbit or going to the moon. Um, and um, you know, when they do so, you know, I think to some degree, vicariously, we, we all go with them. You know, when in, in, when in the Apollo program, when they landed on the moon, um, yeah, it was just a handful of individuals on the moon, but. We all went with them, vicariously. We, humanity went with them. Like, if you, if you, if you asked Peter to Paul of, of people on Earth and said, tell me, what do you think is uh, humanity's greatest achievement of the, maybe ever? It's like landing on the moon. 